Greetings and salutations to our fine podcast audience. Welcome to episode 156. Oh, we made it. That's a way to say it. That's how they said it back in yonder years. <laughs> oh, is it? I don't know. When they say yonder? Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, when I was growing up, that's all we said. Okay. From where I come from, yonder is a place. All right. And it's all over the place. <laughs> you got to go over Be yonder. anywhere. I should tell you all the phrases that I picked up when I was growing that up. That should be a question. Somebody send in a question. Have what are, quest- us all the what phrases? are phrases? All Jason? the words that I learned growing up that I can't use anymore That because nobody knows. Because uh, okay. it's, it's, I thought because they were offensive. No, well, there, there's, <laughs> there's another <laughs> list that I could use there, but they're just so uh, redneck backwoods words. Gotcha. That I could use them and, and you wouldn't know what I was saying. Okay. I got it. That. My kids have actually, hung, when we hang out with family sometimes, they go, y'all talk different. I'm like, well, yeah, we, they do. And, and I know you don't understand half of those words. Yes. Love my family. There you go. So, all right. For those of you who are new to this podcast, uh, I'm a redneck. My name is Jason. And uh, this is Ed. And this is Nathan. We are the teaching team here at Community Christian. We're going to be answering another one of your questions uh, about life and faith and how to think about things in a... Jesus-centered way. We got a question today uh, about Jesus uh, and his ethnicity. Huh? Well, oh, okay. Pretty much. All right. <laughs> sort of. So this was a very simple question, but I thought it would lead us to uh, to talk on a, 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 a bigger kind of subject that I bet a lot of folks who hear us speak and maybe are new to the whole uh, Christianity thing might be wondering. So here's the question. Since Jesus was a Jew... Why is there Christianity? Why aren't all Christians just Jews? Good distinction. Um, you probably heard us when we teach talk about the fact that everybody in the first early church that you know that uh, that started the whole thing came from a Jewish background. Yeah. So, um, so guys, why aren't we all just Jews? <laughs> I mean, it depends on what you mean by uh, <laughs> being Jewish, right? True. I mean, and I'm I'm sure. That well, maybe not everyone knows this, but there is a religion of Judaism, yeah, that's right. and then there is uh, an ethnicity that is traced back. And Jew, even the term Jew, is not referencing anyone who was a Hebrew. It was in particular referencing people from the region of Judea. Okay. Because if you look at the N.T. Wright, we love N.T. Wright, any time you read his translation, he does where it is translated in other things as the Jews, he'll translate it as the Judeans mm. to try and help separate. Now, it has been widely, um, whatever you would, it is now used to determine determine anyone who is ethnically Jewish yep. or anyone who is uh, religiously. religiously Jewish. I would say in our day, it is more likely when you hear somebody refer, refer to Jews, they are referring to ethnicity Most and not that. to religion because yep. they're just... I mean, the religion of Judaism is not a ma- it's not a major world religion. Most people think it is. It is not one of the big ones much anymore at all. Mm. Right. Well, and if so, to answer the question, if you trace it back, Christianity, uh, in the simplest term, is the fulfillment of the what is the Jewish faith, or really the people of Israel. In fact, uh, Paul frequently talks about how the Gentiles, so people who were not ethnically Jewish, people not born from the people of Israel. People like us. People like us get grafted into the story of Israel. In that sense, all Christians are (laughs) Jewish. In that sense of Hmm. it goes back to, it is the fulfillment of what was intended by God through the people of Israel. Hmm. That That the laws... And the religious rituals and all the things that are given we see in our Old Testament of the Bible. Jesus says he is the fulfillment of all of those things. And then you see all of these things throughout the New Testament where Paul kind of talks about. And now all the promises that were applied to the Jewish people, the church kind of becomes the new Israel. And it is kind of grafted in. Uh, And N.T. Wright often talks about this idea of, Christianity, it's not, it has now in our world, in the sense of religion, is a separate distinction. There are people who are Jewish and follow the the Judaism and would not consider themselves Christians, nor would we consider them because they do not follow Jesus. But the nature of being a Christian is to say, I now follow the Jewish Messiah. 
Yeah. I follow yeah. Jesus, who is the Jewish Messiah. He fulfilled every promise that God had for Israel, and I'm going to follow him and do his thing. Now, mm -hmm. to your, I'm assuming what you mean by your question is, why don't we follow all the same practices and religion and holidays mm -hmm. and rituals, uh, things like Sabbath and circumcision and all these different things yeah. that apply to Judaism? I think that's a separate question, but I think to the point, and even the childhood song that my kids now know of, Father Abraham mm -hmm. had many sons, and yeah. I'm one of them, though I am not ethnically am one not. of Abraham's children. Mm -hmm. I have been grafted into that family, yeah. but I don't follow the Jewish religion. And, and, and let's be clear, what they would have, uh, in Jesus' time, would have called Judaism, the, that no longer exists. It's what we mm -hmm. now call temple Judaism. Mm -hmm. That doesn't even exist anymore. Even Orthodox Judaism mm -hmm. is not practicing the kind of Judaism that existed Jesus in did. Jesus. That's, yes. right. That's right. That ended in AD 70 mm -hmm. with the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem, which Jesus foretold. Predicted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I, I think it's important because I feel like maybe, I don't know, sometimes when I'm up speaking and I, and I refer to, you know, all of these terms, I wonder if people fully understand, and even what you were talking about, Nathan, about, you know, the God's promises fulfilled through the nation of, of Israel, the, the Jewish people. Um, I once heard somebody, I thought it was really wise to, to refer to the Bible this way. They said, you know, I wish instead of calling it the Old Testament and the New Testament, we, we've referred to it as the Old Testament is God's covenant with the Jewish nation. And mm -hmm. the New Testament is God's covenant with the world. Mm -hmm. Because the truth is, from the very beginning, we've said this on this podcast a lot of times, the Bible is a unified story that leads to Jesus. It is God's rescue plan for the world. It is a history of how he unfolded that plan throughout history. And so what we've got is God had a plan for all people. And it is a plan that has progressed and developed throughout history. It just started with this mm. one group of people that we call the Jewish nation. And, and it has now extended to all of us. And that original plan was for the world. I yes, think, mm -hmm. absolutely. I think we often miss that, that it, it was. wasn't like God was only for the one nation. Mm -mm. It was just the one nation was supposed to be for the world. But he had to start somewhere. Yeah, he starts yeah. with them. And uh, I mean, God certainly knew that it would eventually come to Jesus, mm -hmm. but had they, I mean, just imagine if there had ever been a nation where people really lived out the covenant mm -hmm. of God and really yes. trusted God, and every seven years, they didn't work at all because they let the land go, but God provided enough for them to eat, and every 50 years, mm -hmm. you know, they had a year off. Do you not think the other nations would have gone what kind of God must they have mm -hmm. that they can trust this much and he just provides for them? But they couldn't trust that couldn't much. They yeah. just couldn't do it. And so the world never got to see the plan that God had. They, they never were faithful to it. It was just one failure after another failure after mm -hmm. another failure that Jesus then becomes the one true Jew. Yes. Mm -hmm. He becomes the the man, the original Adam, who becomes mm -hmm. the true Adam, mm -hmm. who lives out the plan of fulfilling all that God had planned in for humanity. That's a fun thing to study, too. I, I don't want to get into it because that's a whole other podcast. But if you go through and you look at the life of Jesus and you parallel that with the story of Israel, Jesus really, his life is a retelling of the story yep, of Israel that's right. lived out in the way that it was intended that's right, to be. intended to be lived uh, out. There's so many parallels you can lay over the top of those. You know, A lot of those scriptures that especially Matthew and his gospel. He pulls back and pulls mm -hmm. out, you know, like when Jesus is born, he, he has to flee to Egypt right. and then comes back. Mm -hmm. Well, he takes that scripture about how Jesus or God called his people out of Egypt. That's he right. said, this is the fulfillment of that scripture. Jesus was called out of Egypt, out of, out of that land. So there's so many more of those, but that's one example. That's right. Well, and I think when you look at, when you look at the New Testament in particular, you can see... Um, in the book of Acts, but also later in Paul's writings, I think in particular in Romans, they, they didn't even see it at the time as we're breaking away. They have to make a decision at one point mm -hmm. of we have to kind of fully break away because there was this feeling, and what I mean by Christianity, they saw it as this almost Jewish, they saw it as the fulfillment, but the Jews kind of saw it as this little sect of Judaism they that's did. just unorthodox and they're not doing it the right way and it's maybe heretical 
and they're trying to almost call all the Jews into Christianity, and there's a point in, in Paul in Romans where he's talking, and you can almost hear his heart breaking when he talks about there's going to be this remnant of Israel that we're probably not going to get all of Israel to get on board with this, and you can feel this heartbreaking in the book of Hebrews, and we don't know who wrote it, but there's this feeling in the text of almost we have to fully break away because what we have now will get confused with what we had before, and it will it will get muddied down. And so that's why you see the majority, I'll say, the mm-hmm. majority of Christians. There are Christians who do kind of mix still Judaism and Christianity, but the vast majority have really kind of broken away on a lot of the old religious holidays of, mm-hmm. of Judaism and most of the kind of rituals and rules that go into it because what Jesus brought was the fulfillment of it. It was what was always really intended to be, Mm. as Jeremiah would say, a people who have it written on their hearts, have the law written on their hearts, which doesn't mean we don't still look at the law and go, okay, what's the intention here? Uh, Because I also see see that sometimes of, oh, well, just completely ignore all of it, which isn't the point either. It isn't isn't Jesus, Jesus saying... You're to look behind it, and I'm to fill that full. Yeah. I am, I am, I am taking that, and every every letter, everything that is written, every command, it is being fulfilled in the way that you're going to follow. It, but it's going to be easier than you think because it's going to be something that will be produced within you, right. not something. And that's what Jeremiah, the prophet, is talking about when he says there's going to be this new covenant. That God's going to write it on their hearts. Mm-hmm. They're just going to, they're going to, you're going to be able to know, and not just what to do. But how to live in communion with God and other people. Um, but what ended up happening, and you can see it a lot in the book of Acts and the New Testament, is these Jewish Christians. It was really hard because I can I can just imagine. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I, my wife is still Jewish or my parents are still Jewish and they don't buy into Jesus being the Messiah. And I still, I still want to kind of hang out with them and do all the same stuff. But there comes a point where I have to go, no, this is different. What well, I and I also think in their day it was probably really tough to break away because they were seen. I, I doubt every bit of your customs, you know, mm-hmm. there was an ethnicity about it too. Mm-hmm. So everywhere they go, you know, the first thought a person's going to have, oh, is that's a person from Israel. That's a Jew. Mm-hmm. And then they find out, oh, you don't even practice Judaism. Mm-hmm. You practice this other thing. So there would be a tendency to want to sort of split the line on it. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know. Well, and that was what half of the book of Acts is about, this, right. this tension that they feel yep, of. That's right. How much of the old traditions do I hold on to, that's and right. how much do I go with Jesus? And, that's and right. it, was a, it was a really slow tearing away that's of right. a lot of that stuff. For well, them. and Paul's solution, which mm-hmm. is, is if you can do it and yeah. still follow Jesus, keep doing it. If you want to keep the Sabbath and mm-hmm. make it a certain day, but this guy doesn't want to do that a certain day because you also got to remember, especially when the Gentiles came in. Well, they're right. mixing, but I also got to imagine it must be tough mm. to go to a a Shabbat dinner or something with your family who's celebrating Passover, and you're trying to celebrate Jesus as being the fulfillment mm. of what God did, and it must have just been so yeah. confusing. I think that was that that way for everyone, even if they're Gentiles. I remember reading, and I can't remember who it was, wrote about it, but the idea of um, what it must have been to be a Roman slave girl who your body was not controlled by you, and whatever your master wanted to do sexually to you, you couldn't do anything. Then you go to church, and you hear about sexual purity and fidelity, and your body's a temple, and what a disconnect that must be (laughs) mentally to then go back home, and your body is not respected and treated in such a way. I've got to imagine that even today in places like China, places like uh, Muslim kind of controlled areas where someone, their whole family still practices Islam and they decide, no, I'm, I'm following Jesus. What the tension that we, you know, they have to walk in. You know, we had the question the, recently about what do I do about same-sex weddings or those kind of things. And I think, you know, that's really a rare occasion for us, but for people all, all over the world, these are daily things they're having to walk out of. What does this mean for my faith in loving other people? Mm-hmm. And I think that's what this early church is dealing with, with these Jews and these Gentiles, not only being together, but trying to break away from what they lived in before. 
And I think Paul is often trying to tell them, if, if you're in a situation that you can honor Jesus by doing it, do it. But I also understand that you can't eat that meat anymore. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I, I think that's a big thing we didn't realize and don't realize. And I didn't really get a whole lot of it until I went to the Middle East. And there are countries in the Middle East. I mean, we have this thing, Christian nationalism and people pushing. But there are countries that are theocracies that they right. try to run the whole country under the way they view God. And it's hard for us as Americans to imagine what that's like, that yes. every part of your life mm -hmm. has this overtone of God to it. And if you don't agree with this God, you really do stand outside. So you've got Roman emperor worship yep. that is the thing of the whole Greek world. And so they're sacrifice. I mean, they're... Judaism wasn't overt in, in Israel, but Roman pagan worship was. So everything's very overt. For us, unfortunately, in the West, our gods are not as overt. And when you call them a god, people, when, when you say, hey, wealth is a god, Jesus said it was, and you can't serve God and mammon, people go, yeah, but I can make a lot of money. Hmm. But Jesus said it would be tough to serve that god and serve him. Well, yeah, but I'm doing it pretty good. Yeah. But in an overt situation, when you had to name your God as emperor, or you and you had to say he was the Lord, the king of kings, it became overt, oh, I can't do that. And so when you have a Judaism kind of thing that's going on, and I have to decide, does I worship with these people over here that they used to be pagan, and I would consider them unclean? It becomes more of a breaking away in that that I don't think we see as much as why it became such a clean break in the first right. century. So when the question, why aren't we all Jews, is because there was an early break in the beginning of, of time that a lot of priests did become followers, the book of Acts tells us mm -hmm. early on, mm -hmm. but not all. Yeah. And so they held on to this thing. There were a lot of them that began to see Jesus was the Messiah, and prophecy was fulfilled in him, and people did begin to leave. I mean, apparently Paul was pretty high up. Yeah. Yeah. And he breaks away. Well, that had to cause a stir. Oh, yeah. And so there is a tearing away that just over time is, and you know, the Jews got dispersed all over the world. And mm -hmm. I, I think the tough part for us is a lot of people in our day still look at Judaism and they equate Judaism with the nation of Israel and they aren't close to the same thing. In right. fact, even people in Israel these days who aren't in any way religious, they don't refer to themselves as Jews, they refer to themselves as Israelis. Yes. Right. 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 And, but a lot of American people who read the Bible think it's all the same thing. It is not the same thing. There aren't a lot of, I mean, it's, it's again, it has been a religion that over time has gone the way that Jesus said it would go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know? Yep. So there is a reason. It's because Jesus came to fulfill it all. And when he says it's finished, he meant that the law and prophets has all been fulfilled and what I came to do has been done. Mm -hmm. It's done. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. But, you know, God doesn't draw this line to saying when God said that all men will die if you eat of this fruit. Adam and Eve didn't die that moment. No. That's right. It becomes, it God a, has a lot more patience than yes, we do. That's right. We'd like it if he just said, okay, all Jews died the moment Jesus died on the cross because it's finished. They're dead. They're done. No. <laughs> Don't work that way. <laughs> that's not the way. Okay. Well, all right. Um, you know, one thing that I wanted to say as we wrap this up uh, that I think I was thinking of as Nathan was talking, it, um, there, I think there's a pretty good series of messages that was uh, preached by Andy Stanley a few years back mm. that talks about this idea of how Jesus came to bring something brand new that was different. From, I agree with that. And I would suggest if you want to know more about that and hear some really good teaching on this, uh, you can find it on YouTube. It's called Brand New. Uh, is the name of the series. I think if you search Andy Stanley Brand New, you'll probably find it. Somewhere. Somewhere on the web. And uh, he, he did several weeks on this whole thing. Goes into the how the transition from Temple Judaism into Christianity and the tension there between the two and all of that stuff. So uh, highly recommend it. So if you want to know, whoever asked the question, if you're interested in knowing more about that or anybody else, you piqued your interest on this whole topic, uh, I recommend that. So I uh, also want to say before we wrap up today is... Uh, 
Thank you guys for sending in questions because we have a lot in line right now. Oh, I will good. just say, uh, I was telling the guys, um, I, it, I, it's hard to see the end of some of these questions. I, I would say we're probably, uh, not to say we want you to stop sending questions, but I'd say probably about for the next six or seven episodes, we are, we're booked. So if you send a question in and you're like, when are they ever going to get my question? We're getting to it. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Hang in there. Be patient. Uh, you will eventually hear your question, but it may take us a little while to get to it because we got some in line in front of you. So uh, speaking of, next week, uh, what is the question next week? We're going to talk about, ah, when Jesus says, uh, whatever you ask for in prayer, you're going to get it. Did he mean it? Mm. Mm. We're going to talk about that next week. So, uh, all right. So y'all have a great one and uh, come on back next time and we'll answer that one, hopefully. See okay. you then.